Alright, in my last video I said no more Mr. Nice Guy. But how can I do that when I've got friendly in the title? That just doesn't seem to work. <laughs> this is just one of those things that sat on my back burner for far too long. And this has been something I've been meaning to cover. Uh, as you can see over here, I have a brand new fresh installation of Manjaro. And uh, in a moment, I am going to kill the X server and we're going to um, start a new series where we're covering command line basics. We're even going to write some shell scripts in this series. We're going to do all kinds of really fun things. Now, I realize we're going to be doing command line stuff, but that doesn't mean it has to be boring. The command line is your friend, as you will learn in this series. Now, some of you may be saying, but... Yeah, but Linux has gotten so easy nowadays. What do we need all this command line mumbo jumbo for anyway? Well, think of it this way. Anytime you go on a forum and you see people asking questions and they're looking for a solution, the answer will be provided to that person by asking them to input some information into the terminal. And then they may uh, give them the solve uh, with a little command they can put into the terminal. Why? Well, think of it this way. Some of you may be using XFCE as a desktop. Others may be using uh, KDE. Others may be using GNOME. And if you're using i3, you're probably geekier than I am and shouldn't be watching this video in the first place. But at any rate, there are many different ways to do things in different environments on Linux, whereas we all share one common uh, terminal if you're using Born Again Shell. Now, there are other shells as well uh, that add uh, extra functionality. My scope is not to cover those uh, in this series, though. Basically, I'm just going to be working with the uh, Born Again Shell or Bash, since that comes standard with almost every Linux distribution in existence that I can think of nowadays. Uh, there are some distributions that will ship with a different terminal, but the commands are still pretty much the same. Okay, so here we are with our fresh uh, install of Manjaro, and we're going to start simplifying our life. Rather than going through and navigating through the GUI to find this little setting, in time, we are going to learn how to issue a simple command into the terminal, which will allow us to get the job done in less time. And one of the most powerful features that you have in Linux is the command shell. This is not something that you should fear. This is something you should embrace. If you're switching to free and open source software, at some point, you're going to need to become comfortable with using a terminal. And I use a terminal all the time, even though my preference still is to use a GUI for many things. For instance, let's say I want to run uh, one of my Windows applications, and I'm having a problem with running that application. I can run a command in the terminal and see the output of what's happening before that program crashes, and that will give me a clue as to what that program may need in order to function. So using a terminal has many, many benefits, and that's why, you know, you need to have an understanding of what it is capable of rather than just copying something off of a Reddit post or something like that and just blindly putting stuff into a terminal without understanding what that means. Now, in this series, I'm going to be using two uh, different references here. And um, one of them, and the links are in the description for you guys so that you guys can uh, get copies of this. Uh, the first one is Command Line Booth Camp by uh, Keith Bradnam. And uh, that's a free document, PDF, you can get online. And then next, uh, William E. Schatz Jr. is the author of the Linux command line. Uh, I think version 2 you can get for free by doing a Google search. Version 4, you uh, 
can purchase. Um, but the thing is, even the older version, many of the commands that are in it are still relevant today, so you should be fine with that. And then I think there are other uh, Linux sites. If you sign up, you know, you can get a copy of the ebook and that sort of thing. So Google is your friend there. Look it up. Otherwise, I have a link uh, to where um, you can get information on a Linux command uh, from William Schatz, for those of you who want to follow along. So those documents are there. And if you know of any other uh, really good uh, PDFs that maybe I should be having a look at as the series is progressing, um, please uh, log in at cupoflinux.com and let me know. That's where I read all of your comments, and there'll be a link in the description as well to the very thread where I will have all the information uh, relevant to this series. All right, so moving right along here, uh, let's go into my uh, Linux desktop here, and let's um, navigate to the terminal. And then um, for those of you who are following along with me, I'm I've installed a fresh copy of Manjaro into VirtualBox. And uh, what I'm going to do is disable the command line. And that's very simple to do. You uh, run sudo system control systeemctl disable lightdm dot service and then once you have put in your password um, it'll give you a command basically saying that uh, it has removed the sim link and then when you reboot your computer I'm just going to type in reboot okay what is going to happen now is your system is going to um, boot into TTY1, which is your shell, and it's going to ask for your username and your password. Okay, and here we are. Um, we're at our command prompt, and everything is looking good, and we are ready to rumble. Now, the prompt that you're seeing on the screen here is something that I added on. And I'll show you how to do that later on in this series. This is just one of those fun little toys. I like, you know, I like fun little things like this in my terminal. Um, gives you information about the system um, and that sort of thing. Now, when you have a GUI running on this, this uh, screen fetch program that I'm using right now uh, provides even more information. I find this quite useful to have. And... As we progress in this series, you may find other little fun little toys that you'll want to have in your terminal. Okay, the first command we're going to learn is clear. Sometimes we need to start off with a clean slate. So um, the first command we're going to learn is clear. Okay, and that completely wipes everything off the screen so that you have a blank slate to start off with. Okay, now that we have cleared everything off the screen. The next item that we want to learn about is man or manual. And many times you've heard me say, you got to read the documentation. Well, guess what? Your Linux distribution is loaded with documentation that you probably weren't even aware of, and it will teach you how to use many of these uh, commands that you can put into the terminal. So we just ran clear, but did you know there's a manual for it? So we'll just type in man clear. All right. And then basically it's giving us some information on the types of things that we can do with the clear command. Running clear by itself obviously wiped out everything. But did you know that you can put in a V, um, a v uh, switch, which will tell you the version of... Uh, and curses this was built against. And then uh, there is an X one an X uh, switch, which will not attempt to clear the terminal scrollback buffer. Okay, that way, at a later time, you can maybe scroll up and see uh, some of the previous commands that you had uh, put into it. Okay, to scroll the manual and the documentation, the up and down keys. Oops, I accidentally pushed the left and right and press Q. Let's do that again. Um, pressing the up arrow will uh, let you uh, play the most recent command that you had. All right. Up and down keys will uh, scroll. 
Okay, so you can scroll up and down the documentation and read through it. All right, and then Q to quit. All right, let's go ahead and clear that. All right, and in navigating text um, in your terminal, as we uh, move along here, uh, control shift page up and page down will let you scroll uh, your text in your, um, in your terminal. All right, we have other fun things that we can do here. Um, let's say you want to know uh, you want to know what the date is. Okay, just type in date. Okay, and it gives you today's date and time. All right. Now, um, if many of your uh, widgets that you may have on your terminal may require certain syntax for the way that the time and date will display. And that information is provided by the manual. So let's go uh, man for manual date. Okay. And then here uh, you're going to see that there are a number of switches that you can use for uh, the date. And then, of course, there are other items here like percent %C for um, uh, percent %D, lowercase, uppercase. These little things you'll need to put in to that little widget so that it displays the date how you specify. This can get a little bit complicated, but you have this available to you as a reference. All right. Also, um, another fun little thing that we can do is uh, we have a calendar built into the terminal as well, CAL. All right. And it'll show you um, uh, the calendar with today's date highlighted. Maybe you want to be able to show the last month and the next month as well. You're on the phone and you're, you know, making plans and that sort of thing. So we can uh, run Cal-3 uh, and maybe you want the first day of the week to be M for Monday. So here it is. And now instead of showing Sunday as the first day of the week, it is now showing Monday. How do we find that out? By running man and then cal all right and then now we have a manual on the different types of command line switches that you can run against the calendar application that is in here pretty neat huh we just conjured up a three-headed monster and in as we progress along here we're going to be doing nuclear rocket science i guarantee you okay let's go ahead and press uh, q to quit that um, here's another command you see me doing all the time whenever I'm doing an ISO watch episode. Uh, a lot of times you'll see me uh, open up a terminal and type in free. Okay, I want to be free, and this is telling me that I'm only using 76 megs of RAM. Wow. <laughs> Talk about low-calorie Linux. All right, and maybe I want to know, um... You know what my uh, disk you know how much free space i have on my uh, disk drives okay well i can just type in df okay and then it's uh giving me all that information right here and of course if i don't understand what df is well let's just open up man and then df and then you can see some more documentation on that and read it to your blue in the face Make sure you read all of it, because I'm going to give you a pop quiz later on. All right, good stuff indeed. So at any rate, you're not going to remember all this stuff. But it's great that you have the documentation on hand, uh, ready to go for uh, doing all kinds of interesting things here. So, yeah. All right, um, let's say you want to end your uh, session. Just type in exit. Okay, and now um, I'm logged out of my terminal session, and uh, I suppose in our next episode, we're going to learn how to navigate around on CLI Friendly. I think that'll be um, a good one for us to do next. Um, if you have any ideas or uh, any uh, things that you would like to see covered on CLI Friendly, please log in at cupoflinux.com. Because, uh, and, and give me your ideas. Um, if you um, have something that you think that I need to mention on the show as well, definitely pop in on cupoflinux.com. That's where it is. Of course, uh, 
Uh, also, um, if you uh, looked over uh, here, um, we have plenty of other activities uh, happening on Cup of Linux. Between 8 and 10 every, uh, every night, I try my best to be on the Mumble server. I um, want to want to pick that up again and get people uh, hanging out. Uh, Matthew's been hanging out with me at, uh, as well sometimes, so it's all cool stuff. Um, and we have a couple Linux game night. Um, it's been quiet these past few weeks. Not sure what's going on with the community, um, but we still have game night. Um, you guys will remember that I talked about Super Tux Cart, how it's brought online multiplayer to the game. And let me tell you what, it's awesome, and it's great to play with a, a bunch of people. So be sure to get your copy of that and come in and join us. We also play Star Conflict, too, so it's a lot of fun. Have a lot of good stuff going on. If you find these videos useful, please visit cupoflinux.com and hit the Donate button. We can uh, definitely use your support. That is all I have on this first episode, the introduction, introduction to Command Line friendly. So next time we're going to be navigating the file system. And uh, until next time, please be sure to take a little bit of your time and be excellent with somebody today. Peace out. Mm -hmm.